next part of the series in Romans as we call it, There Is More. And I'm believing this morning that there is more for us as a community and in ourselves, more of God's presence, more of His goodness. Will you stand with us as we sing, Oh, praise the name. Kiss my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree.
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. reflecting throughout the week about the beautiful thing that we get to do in worship and it is to declare things over our lives and over our families' lives and over this community and over this nation. And I love this song because it simply declares that our fear doesn't stand a chance when we stand in the love of God, a love that is never ending and will never fail us. And so we're going to continue to sing this song. We're going to continue to declare this truth that our fear won't stand a chance when we stand in the love of God and that there's power in His name to break every chain. So we sing my fear. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance Yes, there's power. 
Well, welcome to church this morning. It is so good to see you. This is a place of friendship, of worship, of learning, and a whole lot of fun. And it's really good to see you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you are a good God and you have many good things for us, your people. We thank you that you do drive out fear and that will have no place in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the way you lead and hold us during the week and for the way you build, encourage and prepare us for the week on a Sunday. Your love is deep. Your arms are wide and your ways are perfect. We give you all the glory this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Hope Valley. It is so good to see you. Please take a moment to say hi to those around you and then please be seated. Well, my name's Rachel and I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at Hope Valley and I love what I do and I love our kids and I love our church and it's great to see you. I've got a lot to share about kids' ministry this morning, but if you are not invested in kids' ministry, keep listening. Pray for us, pray for the ministries, be encouraged and get excited for what is coming up. So this Wednesday at Playgroup, we have some Australian animals visiting, real life creepy crawlies. So it's going to be a wonderful morning together. So if you have little children, bring them along. If you know someone, if you have grandchildren, please bring them. You can hold a snake, you can hold a lizard, and who knows what else we'll have. So this Wednesday from 9.30. Sorry if you're at school, you miss out. Thursday morning, we have our mums and bubs group. This is a beautiful group of mums and their little ones where they are supported and encouraged in these uh, important few months, first few months of lives, of their lives. So we invite you, if you've got a baby or you know someone, invite them along. It's a great group of support. Something you may not know about a mums and bubs group is that every mum who comes gets a quilt made from our quilting group. And they get this as a a beautiful blessing and they bring them each week and it's a great talking point and it's just lovely that they get these quilts. So thank you quilters for being so generous uh, and supplying those to our new mums. Something else I'll share with you is that we put a grant into the Tea Tree Gully Council a few months ago for playgroup and for mums and bubs and we won it. So we've got a certificate. We've got money now to spend on a purpose-built baby mat, which is really soft and thick and lovely and wipeable and cleanable and everything else. And we're going to get some wonderful foam climbing equipment for playgroup, kindy gym style. So that's going to be a wonderful addition to our playgroup resources. And uh, we're just so thankful to the Tea Tree Gully Council for that community grant. We have a music and dance school here, if you don't know, and it is going so well. Many of our instruments are full. Our dance school is growing. And we have our mid-year concert next Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. And you are all invited. If you want to come along and listen to some um, wonderful tunes and see some great dancing, you are very welcome. We've got um, about 50 involved in our dance school and about the same in our music school. So it's a great outreach and we're going to have a great afternoon together next Sunday. Then the Friday after is Kids Club and we've got the biggest birthday bash ever. So there's party food, party games, prizes and you also learn that Jesus doesn't just celebrate you on your birthday. 
He celebrates you every day. So it's going to be a great time for our community, all primary school students, July the 8th. Come for a big party night. And then next term, which is not far away, uh, for the first half of term three, we are having kids church electives again as a bit of a cre creative arts uh, theme. We're going to put together, uh, together a kids church band and choir and a bit of a drama and it's going to be a great five, six weeks together doing some electives. So keep an eye out for your emails for you to choose which elective you would like to do. And a very quick side note, there is a, a table outside full of lost property, most of it kids stuff. Please have a look after the service. Today we are receiving a mission offering for a few of our friends in India. Kanan met um, James and Shoba back in 2004 at a pastor's convention in Ghana in Africa. These two people, James and Shoba, minister in India in very poor conditions. Um, they, Shoba's from southern India and James is out of Chennai, both looking after churches. So poor and been so tough in the last few years that Shoba's not even receiving an income for what she does. So the money we give today in our mission offering will go towards supporting these communities. And James just has a little bit to share about that. It's a bit tricky to hear. There's a lot going on in the background, but see if you can pick up. James has a very grateful heart for the way we have supported him over many years. Hello, Valley family. I'm so happy and delighted to connect with you again. I have fond memories with your pastor, the lead pastor, Pastor Kainan Brooks, and the Hope Valley family starting from the year 2004. Uh, we have been blessed by uh, visits from the Hope Valley family uh, in the form of uh, Leanne and uh, Phil Klassen and then followed by Maureen and Trevor Miller and then subsequent visits by uh, Celia Chanside and uh, Jenny Miesvanda and the mission uh, team uh, from the Hope Valley Uniting Church from Adelaide, uh, South Australia visiting us uh, in various places and especially uh, I also fond, have fond memories of visiting you in uh, the year 2014 and being with you and I was able to stay uh, with the wonderful hospitality of Pastor Kainan and Rachel and his family. I am uh, delighted to uh, reach you through this message. Uh, I would like to share a few things uh, with you. Right now I am pastoring the CSI Christ Church, Netaji Nagar, and Pedai in Chennai. The congregation that I serve mainly consists of urban poor who are daily uh, dependent on their work and who earn a living uh, by that. Uh, this is a congregation which needs a lot of support, encouragement and help. Uh, in this junction, we are celebrating our 25th church anniversary in September 2022. On this occasion, we are planning to have a few uh, programs and activities for which we seek your support. Uh, we are planning to build, uh, plant some churches, few churches in and around our congregation so that, uh, that there will be more worshipping communities around us. We are also planning to help the poor people in need, especially we are trying to uh, build houses for the homeless. Uh, we are also planning to give some livelihood support for distressed women, uh, single parent women, orphaned uh, children by supporting their educational needs, uh, training them in computer uh, and vocational training and then giving some kind of a hope in the community so that they can get jobs and uh, do well in society. So we seek your help and any offering to your uh, mission help would be wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for James and for Shoba as they minister in India. Lord, as they share the hope of the gospel in their communities, we pray that you would be with them, you would lead and guide them, and that you will give them resources they need to do your work. Lord, as they uh, plan to build churches, educate, and love their community uh, far beyond even their, their areas, Lord, I pray that you would be with them and go before them. Lord, it's been a tough few years for them really tough so lord we pray that you would bless them equip them and provide all that they need to share your gospel in jesus name amen
The offering can be received through the app, through the website and through the, mission, uh, through the money boxes at the back. Kids, it's time to go to Kids Church and Youth off to Youth. And Scott's got a few things to share. Thanks, Scott. Leave the clicker. Leave the clicker. For those of you online, my name's Scott. I'm one of the pastors here. And if you were on site, you'd see this kind of sea of kids and leaders streaming out the back of the auditorium. It's just so wonderful to be a church full of all generations. Beyond our mission offering, we give our weekly offerings, and most of us do that electronically these days. And again, you can do that via the app, the website, EFT, to our church account, or if you're on site, cash uh, in the offering boxes at each side of the sound desk. Last Sunday, we had our one church meeting, and uh, we realised that uh, we didn't do things up to scratch that we normally would in presenting our financial figures on paper uh, in advance and at the meeting. And so we spent a lot of time uh, this week... Uh, putting those together and so the end of year financial statements and the budget that we affirmed has uh, been emailed out so you should have it. If you don't there are hard copies at the desk in the hub and so we apologise that we kind of dropped the ball uh, last Sunday for that meeting. This morning we got a great word coming up from Kyna as we delve deeper into Romans chapter 8 and you know Kyna's just doing the first part of the chapter and I didn't realise there were so many points. I've got nine points from his sermon as I was taking notes. So um, there's so much in God's word to enliven and inspire and encourage us. So we look forward to that later in the service. Coming up uh, in term three, starting in the first week of August, we have the Alpha course. We're doing it online. It's a course designed for people who are asking questions about life and faith and who is God and what's the Bible and how do I pray. And so it might be for some of you who are new at a church here at Hope Valley Church, some of you that are online, but it is also for those of you that have been with us uh, and uh, people of faith for some time to invite your friends, your family to do it with you. The Alpha course has been around now for 20, 30 years, is one of the most um, God-anointed courses in this space that has a way of just opening up conversations with people that allows them to ask the questions on their heart in a non-threatening way and explore deeper issues of faith. And out of that, the spirit moves. And Kyna is going to talk a bit about that in the sermon today. So we'll have some more information about how you can invite and so on coming up in the next uh, few weeks, starting next week. Next week's communion, and I'll be following on from Kyna, and I feel a bit like a a TV salesman saying, but wait, there's more because the sermon next week is the rest of Romans 8 and it is, there is more. So if you get excited about what Kynan shares this morning, um, then just remember there's even more next week. So we're going to continue to sing together as uh, we sing about the amazing grace, the love, the power, this enlivening of our lives through the Holy Spirit that Jesus brings. Let's stand and sing. Gift of love, who I offer to a king. Oh, ain't no worth could be held within my offering. He alone is worthy. Christ has to 
Cover us and shelter us in the warmth and the protection of your wings, in the sacred part of our hearts and our spirit, Lord. May we know that you are near and close. In the magnitude of your holiness, but in the tenderness of your love. Surround us in an ocean of grace. Refine as fire. Holy Spirit, move this morning. As we center our hearts and our minds on the things of the Spirit, move, we pray. We have empty hearts for you to fill them, surrendered. We kneel and we bow before you, our God, for we are in the presence of your holiness and you are worthy of our worship. Be glorified, our God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. So good to see you. One of the great things about church is just seeing everyone, right? We come together and we get to catch up and be together. And, you know, we are God's people built for community. And if you're online... Come and visit here on site. We can get to be together. Well, friends, we are in Romans chapter 8. We're about four-fifths of the way through our series. And there's only 16 chapters in uh, Romans, but we're at Romans 8. And what we've been doing, it felt like we've been kind of moving fairly quickly. Now we're just going to slow it down because there's so much rich content that we are to engage with. And today you are going to get 
a full diet, okay? You're going to be able to feast, and if you can keep up, I'm just going to be pouring content into you. Is that okay? And what we have here in Romans 8 is for many people some of their most favourite verses in the Scriptures, and um, it is just so rich in what it brings us. What we've had up to this point is Paul, as he expounds this life in Christ, he talks about how we deal with sin. He talks about God's judgment is wrong. He talks about how he is conflicted in doing the things that he doesn't want to do and not doing the things that he does want to do. And then he says, how wretched I am in my human nature. And yet, through the work of Jesus, I am saved. I am justified. And he gives praise to God in that way. He finishes that off in Romans chapter 7. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he gives thanks to God. He's kind of worked this all to this point of salvation. And now he's got this new life in Christ. And this is the beautiful thing, is he just says, it doesn't stop there. There's so much more. When I was thinking about there's so much more, I noticed that they are closing down the smorgasbord at Buckingham Arms. No kidding. I wept. <laughs> I can remember taking our kids the first time there was a family gathering and the grandparents said, hey, we know we're going to delight the kids here. We'll go to the smallest board at the Buckingham Arms. So there we all were and the kids got their seat and they said, well, where's the food? I said, over in that corner. And they said, well, there's the savoury. I said, you can do that. I said, just be careful. Don't eat too much savoury. Why is that, Dad? Because there's dessert. And uh, what's the dessert? I said, you see that machine there with the handle? <laughs> That's soft serve. And that handle is for you to operate. They're used to those, they were back then it was like 30 cent cones. You only get one of them. That's how cheap we are. <laughs> but no, here we are at the Buckingham Arms. So just be careful on the savoury. So they didn't eat much savoury. I said, we well, can go get a bowl and you can get some of that ice cream. And off they went. And they came back and they said, oh, that was great ice cream. I said, guess what? There's more. I said, what? I said, you can go back there, get another bowl. You don't even use the one you've got. Go back there, fill it up again. And if you look around the corner, there's donuts to go with it. Four bowls later, <laughs> kids are sitting there. I said, guess what, kids? If you want it, there's more. Now, this is not a message on parenting. <laughs> <laughs> Said, there's more. There's more. This is exactly what Paul is saying to us in the Christian life. Friends, you've been saved. You know Jesus Christ. You've been justified, forgiven. And guess what? There's more. There is life in the Spirit. And so he there comes. And in Romans chapter 8, we unpack all the riches that come of a life in the Spirit. The more to this Christian life. So I encourage you to read along with me. If you've got it on your phone or a paper Bible, I'm reading from the ESV version, English Standard Version, Romans chapter 8, 1 through to 17. Life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be feel, fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life 
because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, and I'm going to add to this, and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Oh, the riches contained here in these verses of the life in the spirit. Paul understands. It's like he can't can't get it out quick enough. But what the spirit does, this life which has been redeemed by Jesus, and now opens up to this new work of what God is doing with him as he sees the Spirit and feels the Spirit and experiences the Spirit and tries to get works, words around what the Holy Spirit does within his life. And he says right up here, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free. He understands that this beautiful work of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is that we would know that we are not condemned And when you know you're not condemned, you can live free. For those who feel like they are condemned, feel that they are captive. But if you truly realise the work that God has done through Jesus Christ, the great love that he has for us, that we have been saved and we now no longer live under condemnation, the great result of that is freedom in him. Praise be to God. Because I know that every one of us, And myself, we hold freedom as one of the highest values in our lives. And here we get the picture of what true freedom looks like. Free in the spirit, not condemned, not held captive, not under oppression, but set free. Now, Paul knows all kinds of calamities in life. And yet he knows that freedom within his spirit is an internal work. Regardless of the circumstances, he can be free and free of the law of sin and death. Praise be to God. And Paul understands that this law which things get measured against is so different and the flesh which he mentions it is really about us seeking to not live in the will of God. The flesh is living outside the will of God. Living by the Spirit is saying, I'm going to let the Spirit lead me to live within the Spirit of God, in the God's will. And the law, he says, that will teach you things, but the Spirit, that will empower you for life. And this freedom leads us to a place where their walk is enlivened. If we see here, as we get into the Scripture here in verse 4, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What he's saying here is that you've been called to live according to God's will and his ways, and that is the great adventure of faith. If you choose to live according to the flesh, that is you just chasing your own desires outside of God's will, and yet you've been set free to live and walk in this way. And what the Holy Spirit does is it enlivens the faith that we have and the life that we have. When Rachel and I go for a walk, about three times a week, maybe twice. Well, once we walked, and (laughs) I am kidding with you. But we like to head out, and we've got a few routes. We turn right, we go up Grand Junction Road, and then we'll head down to Smart Road, and we'll do a blocky like that. Or we'll head out, we'll head straight up, you know, towards Newman's, uh, up into Anstey's. If we're feeling good, we'll do the Torture Hill track. If we won't, we'll send the kids. And we have this walk. Now, I compare walking outside to doing a walk on a treadmill. You ever done that? You get on there and you just, it's constant and it's just away it goes. Now, some people are quite good at that. 
for me, it's like, this is the most boring thing in my whole life. Please put massive big screens in front of this treadmill so at least something is happening. Well, I think what Paul is doing, he's saying, you know, you, you can actually live your Christian life, but it's like you're walking on a treadmill. Set the same pace. Nothing ever happens. You're looking at a wall. You know you're doing the right thing. You're not coming alive. Or you could head out there and go for a walk and you're out on the road and one of your church members honks their horn at you. Or you're heading up the track and a snake goes across. Or you're walking along and the kids are just orbiting you as you go around. He says, you can live a lot more enlivened life. And it's easy for us in our Christian walk to head it just as a treadmill with the drudgery. Whereas the Holy Spirit's, I'm going to enliven your walk with God. It's about allowing all the senses to come alive. The spirit, the practical, the mind, all enlivened to what God is doing. There's a few ways in which we can enliven our walk with God and what the Holy Spirit does. Firstly, it brings revelation. The word of God is enlivened by the Holy Spirit. It's revelation comes and it speaks to us. It brings meaning to our lives. It shapes us. It forms us. And that the Holy Spirit does that work. And it can be through your devotional life, but it can also be through the community of God's people as it is witnessed to into our lives. I had this week, this last week just gone, where I felt like I was working real hard but not really getting anywhere. You ever done that? He kind of feels like it's their life. You're kind of just grinding away. And I, but I had a sense that it was important, but I couldn't see where the importance was. And so I was sharing it with our team, which were getting ready for youth on Friday night. I said, I said how was your week? I said, you know what? I'm trying to still put it into context. I've been working hard, but I'm just kind of unsure about where it's all going to land. And one of them says, you know what, Conan? It sounds like Galatians 4.9. I'm thinking, as if they just kind of pulled that out like that. And he goes, look, I'll go find it. And he comes back, sorry, I was two chapters out. (laughs) Galatians 6, 9. I said, oh, what's that? He says this, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I thought, that person, the Holy Spirit used to bring revelation of God's word directly into my life. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, the Holy Spirit brings us conviction. Conviction for very good things and warnings to be very careful. And it enlivens our walk because we tune in to the whispers and the prompts of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are here to get a conviction of this is something which I just have to step into. It's an act of obedience. You can feel the Holy Spirit kind of pushing you along. And sometimes it's a warning. And you go, you know what, I better just listen to this. Just don't do that. Just be careful of going down that path. And it's a whisper and you go, whew, there's something there. And it protects your walk as well. And thirdly, inspiration. It enlivens your walk because it inspires you. As we read the scriptures, we see how mighty God is and what his works is. As we see God's work around us, it inspires us to live for him. So it enlivens us, it lifts us, and it leads us to what the Holy Spirit does to our walk. And then Paul goes on, he says, yes, the Holy Spirit does this, it then, he encourages us to set our mind on the things of the Spirit. If we have a look at this in from verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the the Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is a person, part of the Godhead. And when we think about the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit works on us and in us. Now this is what happens here. Is this is a deep focus. It's a mental thought about thinking on the Spirit. It can sometimes happen in Christian world that people say, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. God's not working because I don't feel it. It's not, I don't get that. But here Paul's saying, listen, it is a feeling, it's an experience, but when you focus on the Holy Spirit with your mind, 
is more than that. So what is it that we focus on in the Holy Spirit when we think on these things? Three things all start with P. That's amazing. The person of the Holy Spirit is personal. In fact, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit walks with us as a comforter, a helper, an advocate, intercedes on our behalf, very personal. Secondly, we think about his promises that the Spirit brings his promise to us, promises to be with us. It's a promise that will guide us. It's a promise that we will be his witnesses. And then thirdly, when we think about the Spirit, we think about his power. The power of the Holy Spirit to transform, to shape, to form our character, to release gifts for ministry. It's the power. So when we think about the Holy Spirit, think about the person, his power, and think about his promises, his promises to us on which we stand. So Paul, as he unfolds this deep thinking about the work of the Spirit, as he opens this up, he says, wow, this is just so rich for us. And to think that the Spirit of Christ dwells within you. Verse 9, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. The Holy Spirit is an external force out there. It's something where, we're, okay, we can just observe it there. Hear this invitation to know the Holy Spirit as something which dwells deep within your heart, deep within your spirit, a dwelling within you. The Holy Spirit is always about an internal work of shaping us. And here the reminder is that when you have a deep sense of the dwelling of Christ within you, that you have a deep sense that you're connected to God and to his people and who you belong to. You can just sense Paul go, how do I just keep tapping into the depth which was in me, given to me from God, the Holy Spirit? He says, This deep connection then leads us to become children of God. Verse 14 For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit reminds us who we belong to. The Holy Spirit reminds us that we are a part of a spiritual family connected to God. And it is an intimate connection. When you use the word Abba, Father, it's talking about this God who is like a, just a dad, a faithful, present, kind and warm. And we're connected to him. We together are adopted into the family of God. Now, many of us just have a deep sense that we connect. Some of us have fantastic fathers who we can get this to measure against. But what the Christian church does is provide this sense that we have a heavenly father, we're a new spiritual family, and the Holy Spirit uses this for others to have this deep connection to God. I'll just show you a picture here. This is what it looks like. Adopted into God's family, where a perfect father is talked about, and his great love is shared. And the Holy Spirit works in such a way that the truths of this adoption into this family are made known. For those who don't have a regular family, this spiritual family is so important. And if we have a mission, I believe this is the mission about sharing of this great love and this mission should override so many other things that we get involved in, which distract us. The Holy Spirit works in this way. And then, as it talks about here, the Spirit allows us to converse 
in such a deep, intimate way. In verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Spirit to spirit. This is the communing that we have with God. We connect in this way. In verse 17, it goes on and says this, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Friends, the Holy Spirit reminds us that we're going to have an inheritance, that we are heirs. And can you imagine that we are even co-heirs with Christ? Wow, how much are we valued by God? And his Holy Spirit reminds us of this. And we have an inheritance We'll rise up in glory. We might have to walk through a bit of stuff, yeah, but heck, God's going to be there. He's going to be there. And what is the inheritance that we might have? Well, the scripture says we inherit the kingdom. I don't think we get a full picture of that, but heck, I know it's going to be good. Just take a hold of the inheritance that we have, the kingdom of God breaking in, and the Holy Spirit reveals all of this to us. Amen. Enliven your walk today, friends. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Go on the adventure of faith. Take a few risks. Live free. See what God does with that as you claim all that the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Friends, the church is breathed into existence by a move of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift to all the church. It's not just located in one tradition or one style. It is always breathing across all the church, reforming, renewing, reviving. And I pray that once again God's people will say, we are here, we are empty, fill us afresh, that we might be used by you and live for you in the adventure of faith that God's given us. Amen. Friends, this morning we're going to have a moment where we can just rest in God's presence and After that, we're going to have extended worship. Now, we've kind of brought that in because sometimes we just want to saturate ourselves a little bit more. Church, we feel like we had a drink. We're just going to drink some more. And this morning, you're welcome to stay on and just dwell in the presence of God here some more. But in this moment, as our team comes to lead us in worship, may you experience the person and the power and the promises of God for you, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you go, well, what is it that the Holy Spirit's going to do in me? Well, sometimes you just have to wait, slow it down. Don't try and tell God what to do. And just abide. And then the Holy Spirit, who knows you better than yourself, will come and minister to you and bring you freedom and life in his name. Let's stand together and sing. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel there. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. Oh
Friends, the Holy Spirit moves with gentle power amongst His people, moving to minister, healing, moving to minister in ways which bring life, words of hope and assurance. The Holy Spirit moves in such a way to form you into more of the likeness of Christ so that you can shine for Him. And the Holy Spirit moves in such a way to enliven your walk the adventure of faith that God has you on. As you go from here, may you know that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is for your every day. He dwells within you. May you know the great love of the Father and the grace of Jesus in all that you do. You've been equipped by Him to serve Him just where He has placed you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Friends, uh, the team here are going to leave.